Good morning. We're going to Hoko today. Uh, oh, sorry, those of you who might not live here. Hokotepec. We're going to Hokotepec today. Thought I'd take you along for the ride. Did I ever show you my, we dug this out of the yard. It's for uh, grinding things. Uh, I didn't find the grinding stone with it. I just found that and put it in there. But, and that's another old thing we found digging around in the yard. It's all looking beautiful here. The boat, we ate a kohlrabi out of the boat last night. There's a really nice one there. And uh, ooh, Bobos. Ooh, Bobos. And I think I've got some more lettuce coming up. Oregano. Juan's mixing cement. We're uh, redoing the drain for the tiny bathroom in the laundry room. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Como esta? Bien. Todo bien? Si. Ah, good. Okay, let's go. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Recording. Two channels started. Wi-Fi enabled. We are about four kilometers west of Ahiki, and at this point the uh, Karatara goes very close to the water. The lake is right on the other side of these restaurants to the left. You can see how close the highway is to the water there, and that those fish restaurants uh, are on the water. Uh, they're called the ba, uh, 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 Piedras Baranadas, which translates as drilled stone or bare stone, which doesn't make any sense to me. I just call them the fish restaurants because the first couple of times I ate there, I had fish, which really isn't fair. They have all kinds of Mexican cuisine, and those parking strips will be two, three cars deep on the weekends. People coming down from Guadalajara and uh, the locals going there for uh, weekend sitting and eating with the family. Let me grab a Google map here and show you where we are and where we're going. We are 1,500 miles south of Arizona and 700 miles south of the tip of Texas. This is where we live, Lake Chapala, the largest lake in Mexico. That uh, blue dot there is where we live in Ajijic on the north shore. That's Guadalajara to the north, second largest city in Mexico. And um, population of the metropolitan area around 5 million. And that doesn't include where we are. The population of Hokotepec, where we're going here on the very west end, is about 50,000. We're now in San Juan Cosala. Uh, lots of public transportation in Mexico. Many people do not have cars. The public transportation system is complete, and uh, you can go anywhere on the bus. Pay no attention to the red light. San Juan Cosala is the home of the Balneario. It's a huge swimming pool complex, lots of pools, a slide, things for kids to do, mud baths, special spa place. Um, you can go underground to a commune with a, a, a hot pool geyser, hot tubs. Great place to spend an afternoon. Going from Ahihik to Hokotepec, San Juan Kosala is a little less than about halfway. 
And the population here is about 10,000. To the north up in the hills is the uh, popular expat area called the Racket Club. Thinking maybe uh, I'll drive you around to some neighborhoods one of these weeks. It's something that I enjoy doing and I think you might like going and seeing different neighborhoods. There's a lot of different kinds of areas here on the north shore of Lake Chapala, uh, from custom-built houses to tract homes to condominiums to uh, barrios to gated communities. To the right is a bypass, Libermento. It bypasses the city of Hocotepec and hooks up on the other end with uh, Autopista uh, 15D. And that's how you go into the backside of Guadalajara. We're entering Hocotepec. Hocotepec is what we would refer to in the States as uh, a county seat. Chapala is one county, it's also a, a town, and Hokotepec is a county, although it's also a town. The population of Hokotepec is about 50,000, and they have a lot more um, decently paved streets than Ajijic, which has cobblestones because it's a Pueblo Mágico. We are at the far west end of Lake Chapala. As we zoom in here, you might think those are houses. They're not. Those are berry fields, blackberries, raspberries. They also grow artichokes, tomatoes. If you've eaten berries in the United States, you may very well have eaten blackberries that came from right here. Berry fields. As we zoom in over here, you can see those are houses. The light colored rectangles are all berry fields. Lake Chapala, that's home. I like Hokotepec a lot. It's more of a Mexican town than Ajijic when you absolutely need to get away from all of those immigrants, foreign immigrants, I'm talking about Americans and Canadians, it's nice to come over here and spend an afternoon hanging around in Hokotepec. Uh, oh, immigrants. For all of those of you who are gonna leave me a comment about not using the term expats, uh, get over it. We're immigrants. Anyway, um, Hokotepec, uh, as I said a little earlier, nice streets, a lot of them paved like this. There are two things that you will always find a lot of in Hokotepec. One of them is topies, speed bumps. They're everywhere. And the other thing you're going to find is motorcycles and scooters. Um, this is kind of like uh, downtown Pocotepec. And straight up here at the end where you would make a right turn is the main plaza and the church. I'm going up here today because I have a little business to do. Um, I have a friend up here who's a Mexican attorney and he does some things for me. One of them is he facilitates some things when you need some things done. Uh, today I'm dropping off paperwork to renew our IMSS, that's our uh, Mexican uh, federal government health insurance. We've had it for um, almost 20 years, and um, it's good to have. We think of it as um, good for emergencies, catastrophic um, insurance. 
But Lynn gets uh, some monthly meds from them as well. And um, we're very fortunate to have that. Uh, we would not be able to qualify for it today because of uh, existing conditions. Twenty years ago, when we signed up for it, uh, it was much easier to get at that time. The federal uh, IMSS uh, uh, health insurance is mandatory for employers to pay for, for their employees, and that's uh, primarily the people who uh, use it in Mexico. As a legal resident of Mexico, you can get IMSS. Uh, you have to qualify. There's a two-year waiting period for um, existing conditions, etc. And there are some other requirements, um, health exams, and so on. But uh, like I said, we're very fortunate to uh, be able to retain it, and it has to be renewed every year. This year it's going to cost us about $2,500 for both of us for the year. I'll be right back. Recording. Two channels started. Wi-Fi enabled. Yeah, this is a motorcycle city. Well, it's been a while since I got a comment about the steering wheel in my old van squeaking, but yeah, I've got that comment before. Feel free to leave it again. The OXO. When we were first down here, I asked a Mexican friend, how do you pronounce that O-X-X-O? And he looked at me and said, we just say 7-Eleven. <laughs> it's the same guy that I tried to speak Spanish to, and he looked at me and said, have you tried German? These colorful banners you see over the street in Mexico in a lot of places uh, symbolize different things. A lot of times about somebody having passed, um, orange is for mourning, death is black, uh, blue is for people who died in the water like drowned, uh, green is for young people who died. I think yellow is for old people who pass, uh, white is for hope, pink is for celebration, and they think that the holes in the paper um, allow souls to come and go and visit us. And the um, flimsiness of the paper represents the fragile quality of life. On our way back home to Ahihik, look at that blue sky. In my last video, I asked you if you wanted to practice a song, and, and then everybody thought that we promised one. We didn't promise it, and we didn't forget about it, but then I got a bunch of comments about, oh, you forgot to do the song. Did you practice a song? Yeah. Which one? Uh, a little quicker, we're doing a video a, here. A bicycle built for two. Are you going to sing it by yourself, or do you want me to help? I want you to help. Okay, can I start or you start? Because it makes a difference in what key it's in. I know. You start, I'll try to keep up. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy give, give me your answer, <laughs> Oh, man, that's just not the right key for me. One more time, okay? Start over. Are you ready? Yeah. 
Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. No. Too fast? What? Too. Too low? Low. Okay, this is the last chance. Otherwise, you're just doing it by yourself. Are you ready? You start. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage. But you look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle belt for two. That was pretty high for me. But you did well. On a well. bicycle belt for two. You did well. Uh, okay, you can go back to sleep now. <laughs> you were sleeping. I woke you up for this. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I, you always, I, hey, wake up. Oh, I wasn't awake. I mean, I wasn't asleep. <laughs> you lie to me about that all the time. You do. Yeah, you pretend like you're reading as you drop the book. Book hits the floor. It wakes me Lynn, up. wake up. Uh, I wasn't sleeping. I was reading. Huh. I have. This reminds me of the train story. The train story? Yeah. I don't think I want to know. It's snoring. Snoring? Yeah. You were snoring. I woke you up in the middle of the night because you were snoring. And you said, Oh, I wasn't snoring. That was a train. I heard it too. Oh. <laughs> hey, thanks for being here today. And all those other days for the last how many years? Never mind. We talked about that in the last video. It's a long time. Goodbye. I'm uh, going to end this video where? Right here. Got it. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.